Hey, it's Vinny. The market has been a sea of red lately and I think this is the perfect opportunity to sit back and think about the long term here. Today we're talking about Amazon and there's so many things I could talk about with this company. They've been doing acquisitions. There's this whole FTC lawsuit thing going on. There's so much I could talk for an hour about the company here, but I think the most important thing we can look at today to give us an idea of this company's long-term potential is their shareholder letters. So we're gonna focus on that. I think that the shareholder letters give all the golden nuggets of all the info you'd wanna to know to make a decision on whether you wanna invest into this business. So in their 2017 shareholder letter, they were already talking about hiring artificial intelligence scientists. So if you've watched any of my previous videos on Amazon, I've also written a couple articles on Substack. You can find that in the description below. I've talked about how Amazon has been investing into artificial intelligence for years and they haven't really been getting credit for it, but more on that later. So let's take a look at some of what I think are the most exciting parts from this most recent shareholder letter, 2022. During the early part of the pandemic, with many physical stores shut down, our consumer business grew at an extraordinary clip with annual revenue increasing from $245 billion in 2019 to $434 billion in 2022. This meant that we had to double the fulfillment center footprint we built over the prior 25 years and substantially accelerate building a last mile transportation network that's now the size of UPS. Okay, lot to unpack here. Now, <laughs> this company brings in an insane amount of revenue, more revenue than Apple, and they built this last mile transportation network that's now the size of UPS. UPS is a $130 billion market cap stock. They built a last mile transportation network that's now the size of UPS. Along with a new sortation center network to assist with efficiency and speed when items needed to traverse long distances, this is all done in the span of about two years. Okay, very impressive. So while the core retail business brings in a ton of revenue, it doesn't have high margins, but I think this just kind of paints the picture for you. They have built a crazy network here that it's gonna just get optimized over time. I've talked about this in the past uh, couple videos, but this is the least exciting part of the pie here. Let's continue. All right, onto AWS, which has an $85 billion annualized revenue run rate, still growing, grew 12% last quarter. And again, just keep in mind, this is while many other big tech companies have seen their revenue stagnate. But again, this isn't even the most exciting part of the business. I think it gets way better. As I said, AWS started investing years ago in specialized chips for machine learning, training, and inference. Amazon is an AI company. But it does seem like the AI hype cycle, AI bubble here has kind of burst. Uh, so let's move on to Amazon's advertising business which is growing very fast. Similarly high potential, Amazon's advertising business is uniquely effective for brands, which is part of why it continues to grow at a brisk clip. Unlike physical retailers, Amazon can tailor sponsored products to be relevant to what customers are searching for, given what we know about shopping behaviors and our very deep investment in machine learning algorithms. Their advertisements are very effective. This leads to advertising that's more useful for customers and as a result, perform better for brands. This is part of why our advertising revenue has continued to grow rapidly, even as most large advertising focused businesses growth have slowed over the last several quarters. So we saw this play out in 2023 as well. And I think you're going to start to see, you know, the two kings of advertising has been Meta and Google, but I think you're going to see Amazon start to eat into that pie. They definitely are already are, you know, their advertising has continued to grow at pretty substantial paces here. Now here's Amazon's segment breakdowns as of the most recent quarter, Q2 2023. Now fifth line up from the bottom here, you can see their advertising segment in Q2 grew 22%, Q1 it grew 23%, 23% Q4 2022, 30% Q3 of 2022. It continues to grow at a very fast pace. Again, this is as you're seeing advertising slow down in other parts of the market. And I think this paragraph here, you know, kind of explains why. I mean, their, their ads, it makes sense why they would be more effective. They know exactly what people want. But I think the last line of the paragraph here says it all that, you know, these large advertising focused businesses growth have slowed over the last several quarters, while there's no sign of Amazon's ad revenue slowing down. They're really just getting started. I think there's going to be a massive revenue driver for years to come. 
Amazon is looking to get more into the grocery segment. Grocery is an $800 billion market segment in the US alone, with the average household shopping three to four times per week. So Amazon owns Whole Foods. They've made some strides with these physical location stores like the Amazon Go stores that it sounds like they're uh, slowing down, but I think you're gonna see it's inevitable. Amazon will start to eat into this grocery market. Now here's one that I think is super exciting. They're moving into the healthcare vertical, which I think is a perfect opportunity because it's ripe for disruption, right? Here you go. For years, Amazon customers had asked us when we'd offer them an online pharmacy as their frustrations mounted with current providers. They launched Amazon Pharmacy. They're able to get people their prescriptions seamlessly. Amazon's pharmacy launched RX Pass, which for a $5 per month flat fee enables Prime members to get as many of the eligible prescription medications as they need for dozens of conditions. I think there's a huge opportunity here. Our customers have continued to express a strong desire for Amazon to provide a better alternative to the inefficient and unsatisfying broader healthcare experience. We decided to start with primary care as it's a prevalent first step in the patient journey. Makes a lot of sense. They acquired one medical. I think you're gonna see them start to, you know, this is gonna take years to play out, but it seems like they're moving into all the right places. They've got Kuiper, which their vision with it is to create a low earth orbit satellite system to deliver high quality broadband internet services to places around the world that don't currently have it. There are hundreds of millions of households and businesses who don't have reliable access to the internet. So they've got all these little pet projects, you know, growing under the radar here that I think have huge potential in addition to, you know, the core segments of the business like we can see here. I mean, <laughs> Their retail sales are only gonna keep increasing. Third party sales are increasing as well. Third party seller services. You know, they've got the subscription services, advertising, AWS. I mean, this is a solid company. Not to mention the company has a $66 billion cash position. So if interest rates keep going up, they're gonna benefit greatly from that. They're gonna earn a pretty substantial return, probably like $3 billion, somewhere in that ballpark on their cash position. I think this is a very well positioned company right now, especially you know with the uncertainties we face, but also long term, I feel like it's a great play for both. It's just an essential company that seems to be doing all the right things. And then to send it all home here, they mentioned generative AI. Obviously this has been all the bees knees this year with ChatGPT and things of the nature, but this is something they're also investing into heavily. And they close out here saying, uh, Andy Jassy says, I could write an entire letter on LLMs and generative AIs. I think they will be that transformative, but I'll leave that for a future letter. Maybe we'll get that in 2023. You'll have to come back. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll cover it here. Let's just say that LLMs and generative AI are going to be a big deal for customers, our shareholders, and Amazon. So with Amazon, you get this retail business that is like the craziest thing ever that people are just going to continue to use to buy everything. You've got AWS, which is solid. And, you know, in the short term, it might growth will slow down, you know, but once we get back to the good times, um, they're going to do well. Companies need it, right? There's no there's no way around it. It's AWS and it's Microsoft Azure. Um, but then we've got all these exciting projects going on. I mean, I think advertising will be core to the growth story. And then you've got these crazy things. You've got Amazon Grocery, the potential there untapped healthcare with the one medical acquisition. Keeper, you know, generative AI. I think the story is really just getting started here. So Amazon, very exciting company to me. It's my second largest position after Tesla. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Where are you hiding out these days? How's your portfolio is looking? Do you own Amazon? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.